Hi everybody, it's Eric Fenar once again. Uh, it's been a long time since we did an Afrezza video. The Buffalo summers are short, uh, so we're out enjoying life because of this drug. I have a really good friend with me today. Uh, introduce yourself, my good friend. Hi everybody, I'm Sean. So I've known Sean since I was, um, I got diabetes at age 10, and I feel like I've known Sean since around that age. So we've both been type one. Um, I got type one at age 10, and how old were you? I was three. Three, okay. And then Sean's sister has diabetes. So my mom and his mom used to kind of uh, converse about diabetics and you know how their their children are doing. So when Afrezza first came out, um, I hadn't talked to Sean in quite a few years and we kind of reconnected. And I was just telling him about my success because Afrezza can work for anybody. I said, Sean, you know me, it's you know, it's not a you know, it's something that's FDA approved and, and it works. So he took my advice. We go to the same doctor's offices. And I actually have some notes here today because some of the things that we're going to discuss in this video are kind of mind-blowing. Um, and some are quite concerning as well. Um, so, Sean, the first thing I want to talk about was how hard was it to get your Afrezza script? Because we go to the same doctor's office. So keep that in mind. How hard was it? Um, well, when I first went and asked for Afrezza, the doctor that I was seeing... Uh, absolutely refused to let me even try a Frezza. Um, she stated that I used I rely on my Dexcom too much, and that's just a, a guesstimate. And she basically, when I was there, she basically just walked out because I would only test twice a day, um, and she wanted me to test multiple times. Uh, so when she walked out on me, I went and I asked to see the PA. Uh, when I saw the PA, uh, she gave me a little bit of an argument about it. Uh, just because she's the PA, not the actual doctor. Um, but then she eventually let me go on it. Um, and ever since then, my A1C has been dropping down. So, see, now, see that's a great story because Sean, at first, he, he'd call me when he left his doctor's office. He said, you know, the doctor won't give me a Fresa. And I'm like, what? You know, because that's the thing. A lot of doctors, and, and if anyone's seen this video, I, I recommend you pass this video along to your doctors to show them the success. Um, so I got some stats here. Sean before Frezza was an 8.7 A1C. And keep in mind, you know, both of us, we try our best to monitor our blood sugars. But as anybody knows, type one diabetes and type two, it's tough. So I'm happy to report that after three weeks on a Frezza, um, Sean went from an 8.7 to a 7.4. So Sean calls me the other day and I answer the phone, and this is after being on a Frezza for four months. Sean, what was your A1C after four uh, months on a Frezza? I was down to a 6.8. See, that's awesome. And here's the thing, he's been a diabetic since age three, okay? We've never had such tight control. We're not doing anything differently, we're still living our lives, but we're doing one thing that was never available to us, an ultra-rapid insulin, that just happens to be inhaled. You know, Sean's at a 6.8, so he went from an 8.7 down to a 6.8, okay, after four months on a Frezza. That is just, I'm proud of you, Sean. I mean, that's awesome if you think about it. Um, can you tell us about the, now, I we always refer to it as dialing a Frezza in, because it's not gonna happen overnight, folks, okay? You just don't start puffing a Frezza and boom, your blood sugar has become non-diabetic. There's a learning curve. We call it dialing a Frezza in. Um, for everyone, it's different. Sean, can you tell us how long it took you and what were the, some of the, the ups and downs and or, or what advice could you offer any potential Frezza user out there? Um, well, when I first tried it, I didn't really have much advice on it. Uh, so it took me to get the hang of it probably about two months to, to figure out you know, when to do the insulin, how the insulin reacts. Um, but once I figured that out, um, it was super easy. Um, pizza is definitely one of the hardest things to dial in. Um, I still don't have it. Um, but other than that, I mean, you don't have to just eat, take it right before you eat. And then you should, should be fine. How, now how important, at least for me, I think it's very important, especially with pizza, um, heavy carbs, rice, stuff like that. Um, if you take a Frez at the start of a meal, how often will you do follow-up dosing? 
And remember, a follow-up dose is, you know, for a, for a meal like pizza, I'll take four units at the start of the meal. I'll take four more about 45 to an hour in, into the meal. And then I'll take another four units maybe two hours later. Sometimes I'll add, depending on what my Dexcom tells me. But how often do you do follow-up dosing? Um, for pizza, I, I do an eight unit and a four unit up front. Uh, then I do another four about 15 minutes in. Another four about a half hour after that. And then if needed, I'll take another four an hour, hour and a half later. Okay. Because that's one thing I want to stress to people, that when you're on a Frezza, a f follow up doses are extremely important. And when you dial it in, you'll see on your Dexcom or on your blood sugar meter, you'll see non-diabetic type numbers. It's not going to happen overnight though. But as I can say, and, and Sean will tell you, this is better than anything that's, that's out there now. Um, it's certainly not a cure and Sean and I, and especially our moms would, would love a cure. Um, but you know, if you have a Frezza, um, some sort of basal insulin in, in you know, in a, in a continuous glucose monitoring system, you could have non-diabetic type numbers. Um, now Sean, the next thing I want to talk to you about is, is low blood sugars, hypoglycemias, because we all know that the FDA, um, never really gave. Uh, Frezza, the green light to to say there's less low blood sugars, and I can tell you firsthand that I have not had any zilch zero unexplained low blood sugars. I used to you know eat a meal at four o'clock or whatever, and at seven seven thirty I would you know be at the gym or at the mall or whatever, and all of a sudden you hit that low blood sugar where you almost black out for a moment. I have many stories like that. Sean has many stories like that. On a Frezza, you do not get those. The only time you get, at least for me, now remember, I don't speak for everybody, but if I do get a low blood sugar on a Frezza, it happens at the start of the meal. And it lasts very momentarily because you're eating your meal. So, you know, the food's starting to digest to your body. Sean, what can you tell us about low blood sugars and a Frezza? Uh, I definitely don't have as many lows. Um, the only time I really will have a low is if I eat eat too slow or I I stop drinking whatever I'm drinking. Um, really, that's the only time. And then if I continue my food at a slower pace, I will raise back up in 10, 15 minutes. Okay. I mean, and, and that's so important, people, because low blood sugars not only affect you as a diabetic, but it affects the people around you. They're the ones that see you passed out, you know, unaware of what you're doing or maybe passed on the floor or whatever. A Frezza will help this, okay? Um, and I'm very happy to report that I'm on the pump and I use the pump as a basal, okay? And, and I think about ditching the pump here and there. But Sean, um, after he went to the doctor's office when he had a 6.8 A1C, the doctor and him had decided for Sean to ditch the pump and try different basal type insulins. Now, he hasn't chosen one in particular yet. Um, you're on day two of Tejeo? Day two, yeah. Okay, and it, we, it, it takes about seven days, for, um, from what I understand, for Tejeo to start to fully start working the body. But um, can you comment just on how it feels not to have the pump on you? Um, well, I've had the pump for probably 17 years. Never been off of it in that 17 years. Um, it's definitely a different experience. I kind of feel naked without it. Um, waking up this morning, I was kind of just got out of bed and I'm looking for it. Didn't didn't remember I took it off. Um, it's nice not to have it. It's one less thing to carry, one less thing that I have to worry about. Um, I'm going to assume it's going to be very nice to not have to worry about pump sites falling out and getting clogged, tangled, whatever. All that stuff, fun stuff that happens on the pump. Um, that's gonna be very nice. Yeah, that's one thing I forgot to mention is that I mean that whenever I at nighttime sometimes, you know, I got the pump with the cord. And every so often the you know, the pump will get pulled or I'll, you know, do something while I'm sleeping, or maybe I'll walk by a piece of furniture and my cord will yank. And then I don't even realize that, that my pump is now not giving me insulin because, you know, it kind of pulled my sight out a little bit. So when I do get a little bit of high blood sugar, and I'm like, okay, I took my Afrezza, 
what's the deal? And then I'll check my pump site and realize that I do have an, an issue with the pump. And that I happened, you know, quite a few times with Sean. So it's nice now that Sean doesn't have to worry about, you know, first of all, carrying his pump and, you know, having more stuff in his pocket. But he doesn't have to worry about pump sites anymore because now he's just down to one shot a day. And that's something that I'm hoping that you encourage me to do the same because <laughs> I've been talking about it now for almost seven months and I've yet to to go through with it. Um, I am a little af you know, afraid to ditch the pump because myself, I've been on the pump now for you know, maybe 16, 17 years and it becomes a, a, a part of you. You know, it's a, it's afraid to ditch, but um, I'm, I'm, we'll do a, a follow-up video uh, maybe in a month or two to share you with Sean's experience. Now, one thing that I wanted to share was Sean's sister, who's also a type one, same doctor's office, same doctor's office. Same doctor's office. I believe, same insurance. I, I believe it's the same doctor you actually see. Okay, so yeah, all three of us, right? Same doctor. I have a different insurance, but him and his sister have the same insurance. What happened when your sister was given the Afrezza script? Um, when my sister went went to see the, the doctor, the doctor just made her do the Afrezza. He said, it's the best thing in the world. You are going on it. So she she tried it. She had some, some issues with it, but she... She wanted it, um, so when they took the script to the insurance company, the um, the insurance company actually denied her for the Afrezza um, for saying that she's on two short-acting insulins at the same time, one being the pump, one being the Afrezza, um, and this is probably three three and a half months after uh, I just I got approved for it for having the same exact thing she does. So I mean I mean that's that's just crazy because Sean was on two short term insulins and they gave him the Afrezza uh, with no problems and then they denied his sister. So one thing that I want you, all you diabetics, potential Afrezza users out there, is do not take no for an answer. It's your health, right? If they say no, don't go crazy. Just follow up. Eventually, if you are persistent and it's your health, so you should be persistent they will eventually give in to a Fresa.